close-up of Tina, seated on a stool in front of a window. I find a lot of people who have major intersectionalities um, are scared of what society is going to think. It, it's, um, it goes back to the paranoia of life, of that people aren't going to accept me, I'm going to be rejected. Intersectionality means that you're standing up for who you are. We are CNIB, Intersectionality Series. Meet Tina. It's the part that makes Tina, Tina, from being visually impaired, to type one diabetes, to being a trans person, to being a woman, um, and severe depression. My name is Tina Reed. My vision is um, no depth perception, and my world is completely blurry. The biggest thing I miss once I got lost my sight and I lost it suddenly was the ability to read paperback books. It was such a, a comfort and love to me to be able to sit down at nighttime and read a, a couple of chapters from The Lord of the Rings or, or Quantum Mechanics. <laughs> I've been a member of CNIB for just over 14 years now. When I first lost my eyesight, they were there to teach me how to cook again, thank God. <laughs> That's my love. Um, how to do just basic chores of the life. Now that I, I've matured in looking after myself, my favorite thing from CNIB is, is uh, the CNIB camp at Lake Joseph. Yes, there is someone that inspires me from CNIB. Uh, when I first lost my eyesight back in 2006, I went to uh, their office in Kingston, as I lived in the area at the time, and that they helped me with that day, and they told me they'd send someone to my house the next day and this gentleman Armando showed up completely no sight at all but managed to teach me how to plug in my coffee maker. What I would tell someone else who's recently to lost their sight to some point is it's just going to change how you do things in life. It doesn't mean you can't do what you used to do. I usually spend my weekdays um, in front of my computer. I love to do research from cooking shows to the other end of the spectrum of quantum physics. I'm proud to be actually a very good cook because I've had diabetes all my life. I have learned to scratch cook from a very young age. The technologies I have used for being visually impaired, I use a, a program called Zoom Text and I also use speech to text on my uh, phone. The most annoying thing I think people do to me, and I, I'm not the only visually impaired person, is they'll yell at me when they realize I can't see them. You know, I've never had an explanation. I've asked many other people that are visually impaired. It's a stereotype. I can't see, so I can't hear. Do you ever feel misunderstood all the time? And I love to teach and explain to people what being visually impaired means or being a trans woman. My family and friends, yeah, my, my family does not understand my choices in life, my intersectionalities. When people don't understand me, I have a, um, a, a scene in my head where I've been on the, the TTC, the subway, and this young girl's come up and asked me why I have a stick, and I explained to her. But I find adults are more um, opinionated, where children are inquisitive. If people need to find most information, as everyone says, is Google's your friend, but there are organizations that specialize in sight loss, like CNIB, and there are special organizations for people that are trans, and there are special organizations for people that have mental issues. I think something I'd like to say to everyone is, because we're different, doesn't mean we're bad people. 
because we have different ideas and different religious beliefs and different intersectionalities, we are still all human and we need to learn how to get along. The most important thing in my life is insulin. I'm a type one diabetic, without it, I'm not gonna be here. You like that one, you'll just say. I am CNIB. Contact us at CNIB. Email info at CNIB.ca or call us toll free 1 800 563 2642. This project was created by the GTA Advocacy Team and funded by a grant from Canadian Heritage.